did finish it, so when you're going to finish it, so today I'm going to finish it. So this particular sermon is mostly geared towards the ladies, but y'all know everybody's going to get a little something out of it. Everybody's going to get a little something out of it then. Amen? So before we get into it, let me pray, and then we're going to take off. Here we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit that is here, Father. Lord, thank you that your word says that where two or more are gathered, you are in the midst, Father God. And Lord, you set up all things, Lord. You have Pastor Bob out in Columbia, and I know he's preaching his heart out, Father God, and Papa Frank's not here, and Lord, you've given me the privilege, Lord, and the honor to be able to, to speak, Father God, in your name, Lord. But Father, I pray, Lord, and I sincerely pray, Father, that we just don't be hearers of the word, Father, but that we will take this word and do something with it, Father God. Because, Lord, you just don't throw words around, Father God. A lot of people like to throw words around and it means nothing. But Lord, when you speak, it means something, Father God. And there's something that's specific that you're trying to get to us, in us, and through us, Father God. So have your way in this house, Holy Ghost. Do whatever you want to do in Jesus' name. And all the party people say, amen, 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 amen. amen. Well, what I titled this uh, this morning, it's called Diamond Girls. Diamond Girls, and somebody had asked me about that, and I said, eventually it'll, it'll come around when it needs to be, you know, so uh, today is the day, and thank God for Brother Charlie up there working with me, and Miss Rachel's going to read the scripture for me, so, um, so here we go. Ready, Brother Charlie? Okay, okay. Well, you've always heard it said that what? Diamonds are a what? Is that true or what? Is that true? Well, I'm getting a whole lot of reviews up here now. Come on now. You mean to tell me if a brother walks up and give you one of them things, y'all ain't going to be happy? Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you got to know the brother now because, you know, you just don't want some joker giving you some diamonds and... He might have some uh, other attachments to that thing, you know what I'm saying, you know? I'm giving you this, baby, but I got something else in the back of my mind, you know what I'm saying? That's real talk, right? <laughs> so they say the diamonds are a girl's best friend. And one of the things that when we consider diamonds, diamonds are what they call an heirloom. Everybody say heirloom. And an heirloom, everybody know what that is. That's just something that you just pass on from the next generation to the next, right? And the reason why is something, why does something become an heirloom? It's because of the value of it, right? Everybody say value. value. And we all got values because we all value different things. Amen? Some, some, you know, might value cars. Some might value the rims. Some might value, like me, food. I value food, you know. <laughs> Miss Shirley said, boy. You know why I like you so much? <laughs> I said, why, Miss Shirley? Because you ain't hard to please. And I said, you know, just give you something to eat and you happy, you know. Just put, give him something to eat and stick him in the corner. He's going to be all right, you know. So, uh, <laughs> so I value food. I love food. Good food, amen. But the cool thing about diamonds and when you pass on something like that, the value is monetarily, but the value can also be sentimentally, right? You know, and, and, and both of those things would make a diamond an heirloom, right? So, but here's the thing, watch this now. But what you pass on, you value the most. So my question is, what are you passing on? Because we're all going to be passing on something, amen? Because somebody is watching you and they want to know what you got. So it's key, very critical, that if I'm going to pass something on, I'm going to pass something of value. Amen? Y'all with me now? Here we go now. Okay. 
Now watch this. So really, in, in, in the reality of it, y'all, the value ain't all about what you're driving. I'm not anti-car. The value ain't all about money. I'm not anti-money or your house or your clothes or whatever. The greatest value that we can pass on, church, is your spiritual heirloom. And if you don't have that to pass on, then all this other stuff is nothing but a bunch of rubbish because it's all going down the tubes anyways. That's why it's key, y'all, it's very key to watch what we do and watch how we're living because, again, you're passing that on whether you realize it or not. Amen? Amen. Okay, okay. Because, see, everybody, put up that next picture, Brother Charles. See, everybody's all about that. Everybody wants that. I love that picture. Isn't that a cool picture? You know, boy, she is, uh, she kind of loaded down, ain't she? I bet y'all, some of y'all was, uh, just, just give me one of them, you know? I, I ain't asking for all of it, just give me one, you know? But watch this, but the world puts so much emphasis on those kind of things, y'all. If you don't have that, you ain't got nothing. If you don't drive this, you ain't driving nothing. If you ain't living in that, you ain't. The world just spins everything around the value of what these things call an heirloom. They just spin it and spin it and spin it and spin it and spin it. And at the end of the day, Lord, the Lord is saying, well, you know what? I think something's a little different here. Amen. Yeah, sure, I, I like your, your, you got your family recipes, you got your, your photo albums, you got your, your pots, your pans, you got all these little things that we pass on and on and on and on and on. But again, how conscious are we as far as passing on our spiritual heirloom? Amen. Charlie, if you can put up there 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, amplified. Oh, and uh, you got the mic, ma'am? Okay, I got you, I got you. Okay. First Timothy 2. Yeah, First Timothy chapter 2, okay. verse 9 through 10. And go ahead, ma'am. Also, I desire that women should adorn themselves modestly and appropriately and sensibly in seemly apparel, not with elaborate hair arrangement or gold or pearls or expensive clothing, but by doing good deeds, deeds in themselves good mm -hmm. and for the good and advantage of those contacted by them as mm -hmm. befits women who profess reverential fear for and devotion to God. Thank you, ma'am. So, so again, I'm not anti-makeup. Y'all know I'm not anti-fixing your hair and all that, but I love what the scripture says. It says, so when someone comes in contact with you, what are they coming in contact with? In the spirit. Amen? Come on now. That is the key. And the Lord says, if you're putting your, if I if, go back to that last picture, Charles, I'm sorry. And then we'll come back to that. Thank you for working with me, brother. So if we put more emphasis on this and when you contact, when you come in contact with me and in my presence, it's all about this and not about the word, then something's off. Something's off. Our focus is off, our hearts are off, it's just off altogether. Again, I'm, there's nothing wrong with that, and I just want to emphasize that. There's nothing wrong. If you got it, wear it, girl, and wear it well, like the bard used to say. Y'all know, you wear it well, mm -mm, you wear it well. Okay, let me start. Okay, that one was for Charles, you know. <laughs> I still love you, Miss Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> but but the but the, the but the point of it is again we we just have to make sure that as this society is continue to get darker and darker and focus and focus on on certain things make sure we as the christians are living a higher standard y'all yeah. we have to live a higher standard and people want to see that higher standard they may not tell you that right off the top. I'm not going to just, they're just not going to walk up to you and say, brother, you're just living such a godly life, and I just want to be exactly like you. They're not going to tell you that. 
But what they're going to do is they're going to just kind of be checking you out. They're going to be looking. They're going to see how you act. They want to see how you respond. And they want to see what's going on in your life so that when they come in contact with you, they're going to say, well, is that what really God is all about? And this one right here professing to be a Christian. Hello. Is that real talk, y'all? Y'all know I'm going to keep it real. All right, go ahead. Okay, just letting you know. Okay, so we have to stop. Stop. And again, there's, a, there's always a, a balance, but we just have to stop striving just like the world's striving. Some, some, people, some people are running stride by stride with the church, and then we just put our little Jesus sticker on our arm. But we ain't running after Jesus like that. Man, if you was running after Jesus like you're running after them diamonds, you would be just the Holy Ghost terror to the enemy's camp. All right. Amen? And we just got to switch it, y'all, and we have to get the mindset right. But according to the word of God, it declares that God's values and God's principles are so much different than today's fashion experts. Because everybody in fashion going to tell you, you got to do it like this and you got to wear it like that. And you know what? There's so much pressures on you, ladies. Am I right or am I wrong? There's so much pressure in this generation. All I got to do is just flip to MTV and flip to some of these other uh, channels, and I see how they're putting so much pressure on our young girls today. Is that real or what, y'all? So much pressure. And I'm like, you know, I I'm just going to be honest. I am so glad that I am not a teenager in this day and time. Not that you can't live the life, but it's just more that you got to battle through if you're going to live the life. See, my battles was a little bit different, you know, but your battles is just a whole nother. And then the next group of teenagers, it's going to be even be more so. Amen. So you guys got some fighting to do. But parents, that's why parents, thank you, Holy Ghost. You got to make sure that you're covering your kids with prayer. And not only cover them, but make sure you're showing them how to be a prayerful person, showing them how to be a godly person, showing them how to be that diamond. So when they get out in the world and things get rough and things get tough, then you watching my example and you're seeing how we are doing it up in here so that you can go out there and survive just as much and shine and thrive as a believer and not have to cave in. OK, not have to cave in to pressures and cave into what someone else thinks. I don't have to cave into what nobody thinks, amen? You don't have to cave into what nobody thinks because they didn't make you. God made you, kids. God made you. And if God made you, he got something specific just for you to do. But if you keep playing him to the side and you keep playing him to the side and you keep playing him to the side, then don't, don't come crying when you get played. You keep playing, you eventually going to get played. Because watch this. See, the enemy ain't playing. I done told y'all that before. The devil is not playing. And he knows that his time is ticking away. Tick, 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 tick. And whether you are Christian or whether you are non-Christian, he's coming and he's bringing it to you every single day and every single way to get you off track of your destiny, your purpose, and of your values. Amen. 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 And so that's why we need to shine like diamonds. Amen. 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 So the question is then, so how do we become God's diamond people or specifically how do you become God, God's diamond girl? And how do you become his special jewelry in this fashion conscious world? Again, I just want to say one more time, you cannot pass on what you what you don't have. You're only going to pass on what you possess. Amen. So let's be mindful of that as we get into it. Now, Charlie, put that, that, that diamond back up there, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, let me give you just real quickly some specific specifications as far as what is a diamond and how, how are they made. So diamonds are formed deep. Now everybody say deep. deep. Come on, say deep. deep. Diamonds are formed deep in the earth under intense pressure 
where heated carbons and atoms are. So, everybody, I want you real quick. I know, I know some of y'all are writing, but take your neighbor's hand. Take your neighbor's hand. Watch, I, I got a point in this. Take your neighbor's hand. So, this is how they are made. First of all, they are squeezed. So, squeeze that neighbor's hands. Okay? Now, watch this. Now, next, you can let go. And then, not only are they squeezed, but they are heated. So, you know when you rub your hands like this? Heated. Heated. And then last but not least, so they're squeezed, they're heated, and watch this. And then they're pushed up towards the Earth's surface. So everybody, come on. They are pushed up towards the, the Earth's surface. And then watch this. This is my favorite part. So, squeezed. Eat it. They're pushed up. And then once they're pushed up, guess what? Then they got to cool down. So come on, everybody put on, come on. Everybody's, you got to cool down. That's right. Everybody's cool. That's right. That's right. And that's how diamonds are made. Amen? So the question is this then. Here we go. How deep is your relationship or walk with God? Everybody say deep. 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 How deep is it, y'all? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, please. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. Oh, man. Rick trying to put me under this time constraint. Ready? We're not I under know, time constraints. I'm just playing. We, 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 Y'all know how we do it. Okay, so Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, Miss Rachel. May Christ through your faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. Mm -hmm. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. Thank you, ma'am. So may you be what? Rooted what? Deep. May you be rooted what? Deep. Deep in what? That's what the world needs to see, amen? amen. The deeper you are, the more they're going to see, amen? And so that's why if I'm going to be a diamond, then Lord, let me first of all shine or reflect the love of God, amen? Let me reflect the kingdom of God, amen? amen. Let my life be a reflection of the glory of God, amen? amen. And that's the vibe that people are going to pick up on. When they see that, they're going to be like, man, I, I, I don't know about the Christian thing, but that dude or that dudette, they real. Because that's what they're looking for. Is that real talk? That's what they're looking for. So that's why, see, thank you, Holy Ghost. See, we just can't be shallow Christians anymore, y'all. Right. The age that we're living in. Y'all hearing about all the terrorism and all the things that's going on in this world? You can't be a shallow Christian. You better make sure that you're, you're striving and you're working and you're praying and you're reading and you're working to get those roots deep in the ground because the storm is coming. That's what I love about, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I did this. The Lord blessed me this week. I was, um, I do landscaping for some of y'all that don't know. And I was, um, I was just blowing off the leaves and I was just tired and I was like man Lord blow any dumb lead blah 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 right and, and the Lord said I got something for you and I said okay what's up and I looked down on the ground and I said oh, go ahead Lord and I picked it up and it was an acorn <laughs> now that don't sound exciting right but it is exciting because the Lord said do you know what's inside that acorn? <laughs> Do you realize the potential of this little acorn? And boy, I started saying, oh man, Lord. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. He said, inside this acorn is a mighty, mighty oak tree, amen? And he says, you're just like that little acorn, son. Deep inside of you is a mighty, 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 Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled man of God, amen? 
But here it is. But the but watch this. But the but the acorns got to be planted in the right soil. Amen. And once it's planted in the right soil, then those roots are gonna go deep. Everybody say deep. Come on. Everybody say deep now. The roots are gonna get deep. So then when that storm starts coming and the devil starts blowing that wind and that wind starts coming back, yeah, I might rock, I might reel, I might till, but I ain't coming out the ground, amen? And that's what it needs to be. That's how you be a diamond girl. That's how you be a diamond Christian, amen? You, that's why the word says right there, may you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. So that's why, so when I'm rooted, when I'm planted and rooted deeply, that's where I find my security. See, there's a lot of insecure people out here, y'all. We come into contact with them all the time, amen? amen? Lots of insecure people because they're not rooted in anything. See, me being rooted in, in diamonds or me being rooted in my image is nothing, right? And not only am I rooted, where's the security? Where's the security? We have the greatest root system, we have the greatest soil to be planted into, and we have the greatest, greatest, greatest uh, security plan in the planet. When you're in Christ, you're secure. It doesn't matter. You see what I'm saying? So that's why it's so critical to be rooted deep just like a diamond. So when the intense pressure comes, and it's coming, I'm telling you, yeah. as time goes on, it's, we, we're gonna see some things. We're seeing some things now, but we're gonna see some things, amen? And when, we, and when those things come, that is going to determine who's who. That's gonna determine who's who and who's what. And it's going to be sad when the wind comes and the wind blows and you see Christians flying all over the place. <laughs> flying all through the air. Well, I thought you were a... Well, you... What, 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 what. Spinning around like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz up in the tornado. <laughs> Get planted. Amen. Telling you. Real talk. Get planted and get planted well, amen? amen? Okay, so how deeply is your relationship with God and how deeply does he even strike you? I mean, sometimes, you know, that little thing right there, just, I, I, I mean, I picked up that little acorn and I know some of the brothers saw me at work picking it up and I'm holding it and I'm just looking at it. I'm being blessed by this thing. I'm being ministered to that by this little thing. You see what I'm saying? And I know they're looking at me like, why has that dude got an acorn in his hand? And I wasn't going to try to explain it to them because they, I just wasn't going to try to explain it, you know. But I was getting something out of it, and I was being blessed by that, you know. And, and, and so I saw God through this, in this acorn in another way that I'd never seen him before. See, that's why, that's why when you're in Christ, and you got that relationship going with God, he's just going to show you different aspects. We're never going to exhaust the aspects of God. You know, he, he's so big and he's so vast and he's so mighty and he's so powerful. All we're seeing is just little glimpses, little raindrops of glimpses of who he is. And I said, well, Lord, it may be a raindrop, but keep raining on me. Amen. It may be a raindrop, but let him keep raining on you. Amen. Receive what he's doing. Amen. And let him show you who he is. And see, watch this. See, when somebody shows me who they are, then I can trust them more. Amen. See, see, if I, if I meet somebody and, and they stick in me and I find out that they stick in me, then I can't trust them and I'm like, I ain't fooling with you no more. But see, God says, I'm not like man. I'm not like your homeboys, your homegirl. I'm God, amen. I'm the creator of the universe, amen. I'm the creator of the stars, amen. I made the planets, amen. I made the birds, the ocean, the fish that swim in them. I'm God and there is no other like me. But if you take the time, if you take time, I'll show you who I am. But you got to take time to say, okay, Lord, show me. 
I'm from the show me state. Show me, Lord. And I don't think he has a problem with that, amen? amen. If you need to see, tell him to show you. And then when he shows you, be ready to receive it, amen? So that, that amen, that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Okay, so how deeply does he strike you? And then here's the thing. If he's striking you deeply, my question is, how dedicated are you to him? And are you willing to give him your all? Everybody say all. all. Come on, say all. all. See, all is all, and that all, that's all is. Okay? Don't ask me to say that again. <laughs> that was a one-time <laughs> shot. <laughs> but, uh, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. All your mind, all your body, all your soul, is all your everything dedicated to the Lord. I got two scriptures here that match up simultaneously. First of all, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Is everybody getting something out of this? I hope so. Yeah. Everybody good? Okay, 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 okay. So Deuteronomy chapter 4. And Miss Rachel, please. But if from there you will seek, inquire for, and require as necessity the Lord your God, you will find him if mm -hmm. you truly seek him with all your heart and mm -hmm. mind and soul and life. Amen. And then Jeremiah 29 uh, 29, 13, and 14. Jeremiah chapter 29, 13, and 14. Now listen, listen to what the word is saying, guys. And we're going we, to we, listen to it now. Go ahead, ma'am. Then you will seek me, inquire for, and require me as a vital necessity, mm -hmm. and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. I will be found by you, mm -hmm. says the Lord, and I will release you from captivity mm -hmm. and gather you from all the nations and all the places to which I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. Amen. Now go back to verse 13, Brother Charlie, please. Thank you. So he says, then you will seek me, inquire for and require me as a vital necessity. So is God your vital necessity? Yes. See, that's where the line is drawn right there, church. See, see, for some folks, God's not a vital necessity. He's just the kind of thing that I add on to whatever it is I'm going on with the rest of the work week. But if he's your vital necessity, see, watch this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, air is a vital necessity. So let me cut off your air and see what happens. What's going to happen if I cut off your air? What's going to happen? You're going to stop breathing. You, you will be dead. You're going to be on the ground choking and gasping. See, just like you breathe your air, you need God. And that's how vital and how much of a necessity God should be to you. Like, so much so, watch, thank you, Holy Ghost, so much so that there's nothing that you do where you can't, you can't include him in. So when you wake up in the man, thank you, Lord. When I'm eating, man, thank you, Lord. When I'm at work, man, thank you, Lord. Lord, isn't this cool? See, with me, you know, and, it's, it, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm just saying, this is just me, you know, I'm constantly talking to God. I'm constantly just thanking him for little things, you know? Stuff probably people don't even, man, thank you, Lord, I got the ability to just put on my socks. Thank you for these cool socks, man. <laughs> you know? Lord, Lord, you know, Lord, what can I do to make you happy today? You always blessing me. How can I bless you? And I'm just, I, I just talk to him like that. I mean, you know, because I'm, I'm his son. Now, when it comes to being respectful and reverent, he knows I'm all that. But then just sometimes I'm just, what's up, Lord? What's, you know, what, what can I do for you today? You know, and it's just that, that kind of relationship that lets him know, at least, uh, at least I pray that it's coming from my heart, to let him know that, Lord, you are my necessity. 
Because they are, and see, and if we, thank you, Holy Ghost, see, if we keep that, if we keep that relationship vibing like that, and when we really do get into a serious situation, he's already been proven as a vital necessity, and you just keep riding with him like that. Even in the midst of your junk, even in the midst of hardships, even in the midst of trials, even in the midst of pain, Lord, you've always been my vital necessity every day. But Lord, I just need a little extra right about now because you know I'm going through, but you know the deal. You know you are my vital necessity. And the reason why you're, thank you, Holy Ghost, the reason why you're my vital necessity, watch this, because I'm deeply dedicated to you, Father. I ain't dedicated to, to no, no other per religion, religious figure, or I'm not, I'm not dedicated to the act of just going through, Lord. Lord, you got a real frontline soldier right here when you're looking at me. And you take the same concept. Lord, you looking at the real thing right here. And I am dedicated. Amen. 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 So how deeply dedicated are you? Now let me go to my background story. I love this now. Now we get, now we get into the fun part. That was just kind of priming the pump. You know what I'm saying? Now let's get to the good stuff. So what I want to do is I want to provide a background story for you guys. And the story is the story of Ruth. Everybody say Ruth. Ruth. Come on, say Ruth. Ruth. Okay, so let's turn to the, we're getting there, Charlie. <laughs> let's turn to Ruth chapter one. The book of Ruth. And we're going to look at chapter one. Oh, I'm, oh man, Lord, help me to contain my excitement. To speak this thing. You. Oh man, this is. Mm. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. Oh man. So, everybody there? So, we all got it? Yep. Ruth chapter one. So, let me give a little bit of background and then we'll get into the word. So, basically, here's a family in the town or in the city of Bethlehem. Okay? So there was a husband, his name was Elimelech. There was a wife, the na her name was Naomi, and then they had two sons, uh, Malon and Chilion. But I just call him Chill, like, you know, my man Will up there, you know, Chill Will, you know? So we'll call Chilion Chill, you know? <laughs> so again, they were located in Bethlehem, and does anybody know what Bethlehem means? Close, close, house of? Exactly. Were you saying that the whole time and I just wasn't picking it up? I'm sorry. My bad. Okay, so yes, house of bread. Okay, now watch this. Then a severe famine, wait, wait, wait up on the pictures, Charles. A severe famine had struck the whole city. Everybody say famine. famine. Come on, famine. famine. So I decided, okay, now Lord, what is a famine? So let me give you a little definition of that and we'll keep moving on. Okay, so the definition of the word famine, it comes from the Latin word, which I didn't put into my notes, I thought I did, but it, comes, it means to hunger. <laughs> but it also comes from a, a base word, and I'm gonna, just going to spell it I-D-H-E, and it means a daze. A daze, so to hunger or a daze, and then uh, y'all heard the word famished. Look, man, I am so famished, and famished means to wither away. Now, here's the definition of famine. Watch this. It's an acute shortage of food for a period of time. Number one. Number two. It's any a short, uh, acute shortage, and then the third definition is starvation starvation okay now we've all heard of the word starvation right now Charlie can you put them pictures up on the screen please okay so look at that this looks like a place of famine doesn't it okay the next one look at that all the crops hang on Charlie all the crops dead dry not producing not growing 
Nothing you can do to that. So when you have that type of soil, and then it kills off all your crops, then check out what happens. Uh-oh. I know. Now look at that. Look at that. Isn't that sad? Now there are people lined up searching for food. And we understand that famine is just all across the world, amen? There are so many people out there that are experiencing such a thing. Excuse me. And, I, and, and it just makes me sad. So my question is then, if Bethlehem means house of bread, then why was there a famine in the land? You ever thought about that? No. Or have you ever thought about if, if my life is supposed to be productive, if my life is supposed to be like almost the same meaning, you know, fruitful or fruit bearing, then why is there famine in my life? Amen? Well, I'm glad you answered that question. <laughs> in order to find out what was going on here, but, and, and let me read the scripture and then I'll explain. Uh, put up there Ruth chapter 1 and let's look at verse 1, please, Brother Charlie. And everybody got it. So Ruth, go ahead, Miss Rachel. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. Mm -hmm. And a certain man of Bethlehem of Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he, his wife, and his two sons. Okay, pause. So you see it right there, famine in the land. Why is there a famine? Well, what you have to do is you have to go back to the book of Judges. Because it says, in the days that the judges rule. Y'all with me? Now watch this. I'm teaching a little something here. Okay, so you go back to the book of Judges. And real quick, Brother Charlie, if you can put up Judges chapter 21, verse 25. And this scripture right here is the hinge, the door hinge that leads to, to Ruth chapter 1. So, so watch this. Okay, go ahead. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. Mm, let that sink in. Let that sink in. Read that one more time, Miss Rachel. Mm. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. Boy, don't that sound kind of familiar. Mm. Okay. Now watch this. See, thank you, Holy Ghost. See, God wanted to be both uh, for Israel he wanted to be both the king and God okay but watch this Israel rejected him as God but they wanted him as king why did they want God as king now watch this now they wanted him as king because all the other nations listen to what I'm saying now all the other nations around them had a king and they also had all kinds of different gods that they serve in these various countries. But God came on the scene and said, look, Israel, you're my special people. I got your back. I'm with you. But I want to not only be your God, but I want to be your king. And again, they rejected that. Now let's think about what's going on today. All of America and all over the world, all they're talking about is who's going to be the next king. But they're not talking about king and God. They're just talking about the king. See, they're so willing to embrace who's going to be the next king but then when I come on the scene and talk to you that and tell you that my God is king, then you reject me and you reject my God. And America is rejecting God. Is that true or what? I mean, I'm not trying to shift and be all, but that's just the truth, y'all. We are every day, somebody is just turning away God. We don't want the Lord of the universe uh, to, be, to be our king. They don't even really want him to even be God, our God, amen? And that's why it's so critical for Christians, if we're saying that we're Christians, we got to let the world know that God is God, but God is also the real king. 
Get your focus on who's going to be the next king and get your focus on the king of kings, amen, and the Lord of lords and the God of gods, amen, because we keep, we keep just shoving him on the side and shoving him on the side and shoving him on the side. And then it comes down to this scripture right here that in those days there was no king in Israel and every man did what was right in his own eyes. Amen. And I'm wondering, I thought back, I mean, if this is God's people and they're treating God like that, what's going on today? And how are we as God's people treating God? Are we really talking about when we say dedicated? Am I really dedicated to God? But yet I'm still doing what is right in my own eyes. And then we wonder why there's a famine in the land because America is in a spiritual famine thank God for the revivals and the different things and thank God for the believers I'm not in you know, none of those things thank God for all the things that he's doing but yet there's still a famine in this land y'all and we can see it just turn on the news and you'll see it all the time amen Something bothered me so bad, I man, that thing bothered me all day, and I'm like, man, Lord, I just cannot believe the depravity of man. So the cats were talking about this new video that was on, online or whatever, and, and, I, and I didn't see it, you know, but he said, well, let me show it to you. And what it was, and I don't know if it was real or not, you know, because you never know, but it was an older woman and a young man, a mother and a son. And the mother just says, I, I just don't know what came over me, but I, I, just, I just fell in love with my son. And then, the, and the son said, yeah, and I just, uh, I just turned around and kissed her. And I ain't talking about no kiss on the cheek. I'm talking about, you know, swapping spit. <laughs> I was wondering if somebody was going to get that, you know. <laughs> you know, a little French, little French, Frenchy, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so uh, anyways, y'all know me. But um, so yeah, and I thought, wait, I mean, what has the world come to where they're putting on the video a, a son and a mother who are getting it on come on man that's so gross but every man did what was right in his own eyes so we know the world they gonna do whatever's right in their own eyes but what happens if that filtrates filters into the church yeah, I love God, but I'm just going to do what was right in my own eyes. Lord, you know I love you, but I'm going to do what is right in my own eyes. Lord, you know I'm dedicated to you, but I'm just going to do what is right in my own eyes. Sounds like a contradiction to me. Because either you're going to do what he says, and that be that, or you're just going to keep standing on this little teeter-totter and going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And again, remember now, I said a little bit earlier, who you are is what you pass on. And if everybody's doing what is right, but then saying that, you know, yeah, I still love God, you know, you're just slapping on your little Jesus sticker. And all of this just becomes just a part of your routine throughout your week, just like work is part of my routine, and da 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 amen? Let's be real about it now, church. Because the real thing's got to be seen. People are looking, people are starving, and people are hungry for truth. And they're searching, y'all. And I pray and continue to pray that when it comes to us, we're going to be the exceptional ones, amen? amen. That's not prideful, that's not arrogance, that's just saying, hey, we're dedicated. 
We're dedicated, and we're going to do our best to live. We're going to live the life. And when I fall, you know, hopefully my brother and sister will be there to pick me back up so that I can get on the right track. And hopefully that those around me in my influence are seeing, like, the realness because they can see the realness when I'm down, you know, and I make mistakes, and they're going to see the realness when I'm up and I'm walking it. Amen? Amen. So that's what, it's, uh, that's all, what it's all about, Okay. So now let's move back on to Ruth chapter 1. So, so here it is. They had no king. They just wanted God to be God, but they didn't want him to be the king. Same like what's going on. So now we're moving to Ruth. So that's why they says, in the days when the judges ruled, y'all catching it now? In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. Now, seven, I'm going to give you real quick seven causes of, of, of why, or what causes a famine. I'm going to give you seven reasons of, of what can cause a famine. Number one, God's blessings are withheld. God's blessings, can you imagine? Wow. Lord, you know I'm trying not to belabor on these things, Lord, but you know the Lord just keeps me elaborating. What kind of life can you live knowing that God's blessings isn't on your life? I can't live without, I don't know about y'all, I'm not saying y'all, I, I can't live without God's blessings. If God removed his blessings from me, then I may not even breathe. If God removed his blessings from me, when I'm driving to work, I may not even make it there. If God removes his blessings, uh, you know, ain't no telling what could happen. But think about, thank you, Lord, but isn't God so merciful and gracious to us? even when we're not so merciful and gracious, because all of us in here breathing, all of us in here, you know, can eat, all of us in here put on our clothes, all of us in here, there's some kind of blessing in our lives where we can say, you know what, that's the blessing of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so one reason is God's blessings is withheld. And I think to a certain degree, God with, is withholding his blessings from America. Yeah, yeah, Do you all agree with that? Yeah. And, 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 and because he says you're killing babies, you're doing things that is so anti-God that I can't bless that mess. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, you better tweet that. God don't bless mess. <laughs> tweet it. And say Willie said it, you know. He ain't going to no, bless no mess. Amen. Okay, second thing is, uh, the want of seasonable rain. Write that down. The want of seasonable rain. My question is, watch now. Listen to this, church. Are you dry and in need of seasonal rain? Think about what I'm asking you now. Are you dry and in need of seasonal rain? If so. It's time for you to worship God so that seasonal rain can burst open and rain down on you. All of us in some area of our life were dry. No, I'm not, no, I'm not, at least for me, I'm not going to sit up here and paint no picture, Brother Spence, like I got it going on and I'm all together. That ain't the <laughs> truth. I got some dry spots. I got some spots in my heart that are famine, and if you tap into that, you're going to see, right. okay, let's, I ain't going to let me stop that now. So, so that's why worship is so powerful. That, thank you, Holy Ghost. That's why when you come in here and the worship music begins, don't you play church, and don't you play this, that, or the other. You are in the presence of Almighty God. And God says it could be during this time that you receive your healing. It could be during this time of worship that you could receive your blessing. It could be during this time of worship that your mind could be renewed. I can move mightily and I can pour out the rain that you need in the deepest of worship. Amen. That's why worship is so critical. Amen. Amen. And they thank God that, you know, we have some great worship leaders in this house. And they do, and I really believe they do their best to take us to the throne of God. But you got to go there with them. Yeah. 
And when we're all in the presence of God, and when I know that when the glory comes up, the blessings come down. When the glory goes up, the rain comes down. So if you need some rain, if you dry, and if you brittle, and you're feeling kind of crunchy, <laughs> maybe it's time to do some, maybe it's time for some worship. Amen. Moving on. Okay, oh, I love this one. Watch this. The, the, another one is rotting seed in the ground. So we said, the God, the, what causes a famine? God's blessings are withheld. A want of seasonable rain. And the third one is rotting seeds in the ground. Here's the question. Oh, man, Lord. I, whew, watch this. What's causing the seeds of truth to rot in the soils of our heart. I'm going to ask that one more time. What's causing the seeds of truth to rot in the soils of our heart? Because the word is a seed. And when you plant the word and you plant praise and worship and, and, and love, joy, and everything else that God has to offer, that seed is going to take root and that seed will grow, amen? But if you counteract that, so if I'm saying, watch this, I'll, I'll just put myself in the mix. So if I'm saying that, you know, I want to get the word of God in my heart, I want to get, I want to get lust out of my heart, Lord. I want to really get this lust out of my heart, Lord, but I keep watching pornography. How is is the word of God going to grow in my heart if I continue to watch that filth? I'm counteracting the word, amen? So therefore, what little word that I did plant, it's rotting because of my disobedience. And if there's rottenness, then it's going to stink and it's going to foul and there's going to be no fruit. And you can't shine like a diamond if you're all rotten on the inside. And the cool thing about God is he's saying, look, kids, I'm trying to get my word into you. I'm trying to get life into you. I'm trying to get, thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to get hope into you. I'm trying to get some encouragement into you. I'm trying to get the seed in your heart, but you keep rejecting it with your disobedience. And disobedience is not going to produce the fruit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's why we have to be careful what we do. Yet yeah, none of us are perfect. I'm, uh, we know that. We know that. But then I know when I'm being imperfect. Is that true? Oh, I know when I'm being, oh, don't believe me, I know. It's loud and clear right there. Bam, you know. Lord have mercy. Let me, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So, so is the seed of the word of God rotting in your heart? And the next one, watch this. Scorching wind and mildew. Scorching wind and mildew. Are things in your life like a desert? Hot, blistering, chaped, and dry? Or is your fruit contaminated, like mildew, smelly, and fungus, uh, with, and it has fungus growth, and it's decaying? So let's think about that. Scorching wind and mildew. And you know that enemy, he going to try to get those winds stirred up. He wants to make sure that mildew is set in, in our hearts and in our minds. And it just creates a whole, whole realm, thank you, Lord, a whole realm of destruction to the word of God. That's why, thank you, Holy Ghost, that's why we can't take spiritual warfare lightly. Because this thing is on and popping. If you've ever seen Vietnam or ever seen any of the war movies and you, and you feel the intensity uh, of those wars, spiritual warfare is a hundred times intense. It's real. There are demons out there out to get us, y'all. 
They want to cut us off. They want to make sure that we're dry. They want to make sure that we're smelly. They want to make sure fungus is growing all up in us. They want to, and they're doing, and they don't sleep. The demons don't sleep. But thank God for them angels. Oh, oh man, watch this. <laughs> See, oh boy, you might have your click, but I got my click too. <laughs> you might got your posse, but I got mine too, baby. You know what I'm saying? And just because you don't see them, don't mess with me. You better not mess with me. Because when I call on the Lord and the Lord start unleashing them jokers, boy, they bringing the lightning and the thunder, baby. You better watch who you messing with. <laughs> you better watch yourself. Thank God for those angels. Amen. Where would I be without my angels? Where would you be without them angels? All kind of stuff the demons were trying to set up. And boy, them angels come in there with them big swords, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like ninjas, you know what I'm saying? You know, y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, everybody was kung fu fighting. Yeah. See y'all. <laughs> Thank God we can have fun in Jesus, amen. But thank God for them angels, Lord, because it's real. That warfare is real, amen. Okay, okay. Lord, have mercy. Sometimes I think the Lord looks at me and says, Lord, have mercy. What am I going to do with that boy? Okay, here we go. Here we go, two more. Uh, three more, actually. Uh, the devastation by enemies. That's the next one. Devastation by enemies. See, me personally, I've experienced this where I have personally suffered devastations and attacks by the hand of the enemy. What about you? Amen. Because when they come, and if we don't have our defenses up, they're coming in and they're going to bum rush and they're going to mess up everything amen and boy I tell you I can I can sing a song and dance about that I tell you but devastation by enemies the next one is imperfect knowledge I love this imperfect knowledge of agriculture that's the next one imperfect knowledge of agriculture now watch this see if we do not have the proper knowledge of how to care for the soils of our hearts we will perish does that make sense do I need to say that again okay okay I'll say it again if we do not have the proper knowledge of how to care for our soil, our hearts, we will perish. And the Bible says people perish for lack of knowledge. Okay? And see, and when we lack knowledge, watch this, we lack the ability, watch this, to stimulate growth in unfavorable seasons or localities to aid in the productive process. Does that make sense, y'all? So if you don't have the knowledge and when the unfavorable seasons come, you won't be able to produce because you lack the knowledge of the word. Amen? This is why you got to speak the word over yourself. Faith comes by and hearing the word of God. So really there's no excuse not to have the knowledge y'all. There is no excuse. But so many people, so many Christians are perishing because they don't know, they don't know agriculture. And I mean when when we talk about the heart it's agriculture. That's why the, Jesus used the, the terms, and when he gave parables, he used agriculture. Amen? Amen? We got to understand this. Get that word in your heart and take care of the seed. Because I know all, a lot of y'all in here have grown stuff, right? How many of y'all have grown a plant or grown some corn or whatever, whatever, whatever? It all starts with a seed, and you got to water it, and you got to nourish it. Sometimes you got to prune it. I mean, there's so much work that goes into it, but the result is when unseasonable or unfavorable times come, I got me some corn in that refrigerator. 
I got me something in that can, you know what I'm saying, that some preserves up in them, uh, what do they call them, jars? Mason jars, that's right. I got something in them mason jars that they're sitting up there, and all I need to do is get a piece of bread. There we go. You see? Because they're coming. And if you're not going through anything right now, that's cool. I ain't mad at you. But I'm telling you, but as America continues to move forward, there's going to be some unfavorable times that are coming to the Christians. Receive it. I'm telling you the truth. It's coming. Okay? And then the last one is defective transit. Defective transit. Oh, this is great. This is great. Watch this. When I, what I mean by defective transit is getting the word of God from here to here. Between the two travels, there's something defective that can happen. Because it's hard, because see, you know, and especially like, and I'm just saying, like me, because I love the, stu I love the study and I love details and, and I want to know every little thing. But the problem is sometimes is getting it from here and making it active here. You see what I'm saying? And, 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 and then the Lord says there's nothing wrong with studying, there's nothing wrong with knowledge, but your, your, your transit is defective because it's only here and it's not here. Amen. So let's make it a point, y'all, to make sure that the word of God is just not only in our heads, but it's really in our hearts. Because that's where everything is going to flow. Amen? Amen. Like and Papa Rick, was, you, you, and when you were saying that earlier about having this old head knowledge thing, you know? We, it, it's good to have that. It's important to have that. It's important to know about these things. But it's got to be alive here. It, it's, it's not going to count really much for anything if it's just here. And so, that, and so that's why when I tell my testimony... I can get all jazzed up. It don't take much to get me all excited anyways. But I can get all jazzed up and I can get all excited about it because, see, it's coming from the guts. And when I'm telling you how God delivered me, that's coming from the guts, amen. That's coming from the deep well inside of me. That just ain't my head because my head was banged up anyways. Okay? But God had to make sure he got it from here and got it in my heart, amen. So let's just make sure that we, when it comes to the word of God, our transit isn't defective. Amen? Amen. Okay, let me, oh my word. I'm just on my first page, y'all, just getting it. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Okay, but are y'all getting something out of this, please? Is, is this good? Is this really good? Okay, okay. I just always want to make sure, you know, people getting something out of it. Okay, let me just, just give me a little bit more and let me, let me at least get into Ruth. So it's going to have to be a part three, okay? Okay, here we go. Okay, so the Bible says that Ruth, I mean, that uh, the family had to move to Moab. Okay, everybody say Moab. Moab. Now, why is Moab Moab? Anybody know? Let me get a little closer to so make sure I hear. <laughs> okay, okay, well, let me, let me talk about it. Moab means, watch this, of a father. Of a father. Okay, do you remember Sodom and Gomorrah? Is everybody, everybody familiar with that story? Where God just burnt up the city? And he asked Lot, who was Abraham's cousin, and his wife and the two girls. I don't know whatever happened to their husbands. I mean, I guess they stayed. But he asked Lot, and his, this famine is too bad. We got to, we got to move to Moab, y'all. We got to go here, right? So here it is. When they moved to Moab, the father, the wife, and the two boys, they got hitched to two Moabite girls, okay? And one's name was Ruth. And who was the other? Y'all remember? No, 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 no. Orpah. Exactly. Orpah. So, so the two girls, one was Ruth 
and one was Oprah. And so can you imagine a Jewish mother, you know, allowing her son to marry a Moabite woman when you understand the history of the Moabites? But nevertheless, it happened, okay? Now watch this. So bam, tragedy strikes and Naomi husbands died, okay? Now, uh, let's pick up with the reading. Uh, let's start at verse two, and let's go to verse five. So two to five, Miss Rachel. Thank you, Brother Charlie. The man's name was Elimelech, mm -hmm. and his wife's name was Naomi, mm -hmm. and his two sons were named Malon, mm -hmm. invalid, mm -hmm. and Chilion, pining. They were... Ephrathites, Ephrathites from mm -hmm. Bethlehem of Judah. They went to the country of Moab and continued there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, but First. Emelech, who was Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. Uh -huh. And they took wives of the woman, women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. Mm -hmm. They dwelt there about ten years. Verse 5. And Malan and Chilion died also, both of them, so the woman was bereft of her two sons and her husband. So think about this. Isn't this kind of a rough story out off the top? First of all, there's famine in the land. No food, no water, no anything. And then they had to pick up and go to the country of Moab. And then after they got to Moab, Naomi husbands died. Oh, man, well, at least, you know, okay, Lord, you took my husband, but at least I got my two boys. So now 10 years have passed, and then the two boys have died, and now it's just the three women. And think about it. When stuff starts dying in our own lives, when tragedy hits us, how do we respond? What, 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 do, what do we do? And I don't know about y'all, but has there ever been a time when you looked up to God and said, what are you doing up there, man? <laughs> Come on now. I can speak for myself. What the heck are you doing? Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Sorry. Y'all know what I mean. <laughs> Sorry. What are you doing? <laughs> You know, and, 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 and sometimes you're just in life, just left, just scratching your head, wondering what, what, what's going on, God. What, what, I'm a woman. What am I supposed to do here, God? Here it is. I'm living in a world that's male-dominated. I have no males. I've got these two Moabite women that are not even really of, the, you know, whatever we think about them as a Jewish person. And so all of her life is just clouded by all of this stuff. So what happens or how do we respond when death starts knocking on the door? Because it's, if it hasn't come, it's going to come. And we got to deal with death-like situations. And I'm telling you, y'all, for me personally, it ain't easy. And you talk about more of a fight. It's already when things are going normal, you got that spiritual warfare thing going on and you're having to fight. But just imagine when death is on, sitting on top of that and you're under the weight of all that. And here it is, this woman just trying to do the right thing, trying to, to live for God, trying to, to be the woman, the, the wife, the mama, the mother-in-law. She's trying to do all these things, and yet more and more and more keeps getting stacked up on her. And you know what? Let's just be honest. I mean, sometimes when you get under pressure like that, some people just break. But that's okay, because this is the point where the church comes in, amen? This is the point where real love comes in, you know, and, and, you, know, and you, can't, you can't blame the Naomi's of the world, amen? Because they're out there, y'all, and they're under such weight of death 
and destruction that's just sitting on top of them. They just don't know what to do. They don't know how to react. They don't know even how to respond. Amen? And so this is where, that's why I say, man, Lord, it is just so critical that when this type of thing comes, the first thing is we can't, we can't turn back. Everybody say turn back. back. Come on, turn back. Okay, now, uh, if you don't mind reading for me, uh, uh, Naomi, (laughs) Miss Rachel, (laughs) sorry. Uh, Let's pick up at verse 8, please. And just just a couple more minutes, y'all. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. Mm -hmm. The Lord grant that you may find a home and rest, each in the house of her husband. Yes. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. Mm-hmm. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that may become your husbands? Mm-hmm. Turn back, my daughters. Go, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband tonight and should bear sons, Mm -hmm. would you therefore wait till they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it is far more bitter for me than for you that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Pause. So Naomi was so caught up in her pain, watch this, that she allowed her thinking to become contaminated and when her thoughts became contaminated her speech became contaminated which led others to negative actions so that's why we got to watch how we think and we got to watch what we say because what you think and what you say you're going to act and when and when you act somebody else might act and so she's telling these girls look Y'all need to just turn back. Y'all just need to go home. You know what? The Lord's hand is against me. The Lord ain't got nothing else for me. My, my life is over. I'm dead. I'm dry. I'm brittle. Why don't y'all just go back? Have you ever felt like that? Two sides. The one who's saying my life is dry, brittle, so on and so forth. And then as that same person encouraging someone else to look, you don't need to hang out with me. Just just go on about your business. Just go back. There's no turning back in the kingdom, y'all. Once you put your foot forward, you keep putting another one forward. Amen. And you keep stepping and you keep moving and you keep shaking and you keep hustling. But no matter what, you keep that one foot right in front of the other because there is no turning back. And if you're turning back, it's only because of your negative actions, your negative words, and your negative attitudes. And how many people have we caused to fall or turn back because of the loss or lack of focus of God in our lives? Amen? And how many people have walked away from the Lord because we have encouraged them to go back? Amen? Because watch this. In life, situations and circumstances can cause us to become very bitter. Everybody say bitter. Bitter. Come on, everybody say bitter. Bitter. Watch this. You know, it could be, we could be bitter at ourselves, which I have been. We can be bitter at others, which I have been. We can be bitter at God, which I have been. But watch this. And this is another tweet right here, but watch it. It says, never let your bitter roots to become bitter fruits because somebody gonna pick the fruit off your tree. Do I need to say that? Do I need to say that again? Okay. Never let your bitter roots to become bitter fruits because somebody's going to pick the fruit off your tree. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good, amen? So when I'm next to you and I pluck your fruit, what am I tasting? Am I, am I tasting and seeing how good God is, or am I tasting your bitter, nasty fruit? And if I'm tasting your nasty fruit, that means you got a nasty root. 
and ain't no word of God up in there. No. Okay? We should not be bitter people. I know it's hard. Because, uh, man, I had to, str- I had to struggle through that, that bitterness stage because I went through that for a minute. And I was so bitter. I mean, I was deeply, oh, man, so bitter, so bitter that nobody can be, nobody wanted to be around, man. That's, and that's what you get, you know. And here it is, Naomi, she done, she done got so contaminated, her thoughts were so messed up that she says, I'm just a bitter old woman. Well, you have what you say. Okay? And that stuff started coming up. But think about it. Because, see, when we all go through loss and we go through stuff like that, it's easy to get mad. It's easy to get upset. It's easy to get bitter. Because I lost something. I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I can't get it back. I can't, I can't grab it back. It's gone. And then now, because it's gone, now you got to blame somebody for, because why ain't it there? This is supposed to be, my husband was supposed to be here by my side in this God-forsaken country called Moab. And my boys, how is it, God, that I, I'm living longer than my children? I, I, I believe that's probably got to, I'm not a parent, but I mean, that probably has to be one of the most mind-blowing things is when a mother has to bury her her child so I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna be too hard on Naomi but she did get off and so do we amen if we're real with ourselves we all get off and we start turning towards that, that bitter thing and it, we get so introspective. And, and all bitter is, bitterness is is just uh, pent up anger. That's all bitterness is. So Naomi was mad at the world. Mad at the world. And, you know, like I said, I don't want to be too hard on the sister, but I, I can't blame her. And because of that, how many people, watch this, have turned away from the Lord or have been discouraged from God because of our bitter spirit? Let that sink in, y'all. Because that's real. Think about it. And I I remember remember one, one particular instance where uh, I was uh, youth pastoring at a church. This is real, and uh, and I, you know, of course, I'm a youth pastor, so I got my kids right there, you know, and you know, and when you're a youth pastor, them kids are watching you, you know, they're constantly watching you. And there was a point where I let my guard down, and I let my flesh get in the way, and to look those kids in the eyes and see the disappointment and the hurt. Because Mr. Willie, we, we, you know, we, we knew you was the real thing, but wh- wh- how could, uh, what happened? And then next thing you know, the youth group starts dwindling down. And I have to stand before God for that. Now I don't condemn myself now, but that's a reality that I'm, I'm gonna face one day when I stand before the Lord. Instead of being the dedicated man of God, like I said I was, I just let my guard down just for, and that's all it takes, y'all. You let your guard down and the devil is on it. And he's going to bring that temptation. And if you're not able to see the exit door, which I was sharing with somebody about that exit door, if you can't see the exit door and you decide to keep the door closed and get involved in whatever temptation he's bringing, then after that comes destruction. And those kids never looked at me the same. I, I could just, you could just see it. And you know how that broke my heart? And I wept before the Lord. And it don't matter how many times you say sorry. And, you know, and eventually, you know, I guess, you know, they'll know that, you know, hey, this dude is real about what, his repentance. But the damage has been done. They stopped coming to church. And these were kids that were so out there. They were so out there. And just to get them to church, 
in the church was a miracle. But not only that, then they're beginning to see the word work in their life. And you, you see, that's why it's so critical. See, they, see, that's why, you know, when I tell people that I, there's so many experience, things that I've experienced in my life, I bring all of that to the table, amen? And I tell the young people, man, you can live for God. And it's in here in this word, because kids y'all's age have done it too. And y'all are the one that is carrying on the next level, or supposed to be carrying on the next level of God's glory. And the next level of truth, and the next level of the kingdom is on y'all's shoulders. Mom and daddy can only do so much. We can only teach you but so much. But if you don't take it and put it in your heart and put it in your mind and live it out of your life, ain't nothing I can do. Ain't nothing we can do. And then, but yet you want God to bring destiny and purpose in your life. How can God bring destiny and purpose when you ain't even got a relationship with him? When's the last time you spent in time prayer on your knees before God? When's the last time you was in your word saying, oh God, please forgive me of my mess ups. Oh God, I want to see revival come into my school. And if you got to use me for revival, then use me for revival. But God, do something because my friends are dying and going to hell. And hell is a real place. And it's your responsibility. Ain't nothing wrong with being cool. Ain't nothing wrong with being fly because, you know, I'm the dopest and fly is like right there with them. You know, I hang right there with y'all. We can all be fly. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with that. But I'll tell you what, when it comes down to preferring to be fly or be Christian, I'm Christian. Amen. Fly can come later, but I'm Christian first. So be Christian first, then be fly second. Okay? Y'all with me? And that's real, y'all. Because I had to look into to, to these young people's eyes and I had to see the, that, that because of my bitterness and because of me, they turned away from God and never came. I, I hope they're back, but as far as I know, they never came back. Marriages are ruined because of bitter spirits, Amen. Relationships ruined because of bitter spirits, amen? So I can't let bitterness get up in, 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 and we can't let this thing get in our heart. It's so serious because once you become bitter, everything is going to follow that, y'all, and somebody's going to pick up on that, and that's not encouraging them to come closer to God. Actually, it's going to turn them off from God, amen? Is that real talk, y'all? That's the truth. It's late. I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to shut it down. It's just going to be another <laughs> continuation. <laughs> but did y'all get something out of this, though? Yeah. Amen? So just, just give me a couple more minutes, and then we're done. We're done. We're done, okay? So I, I, see, I'm closing the book, putting up my notes, <laughs> all of that. So that's done, because y'all know me. I'm... I'm like a rapper, I can just keep going, you know what I'm saying, you know, I can just keep, but, you know, but, but um, so, so, of all the points that we talked about, was there something specifically that you're like, man, Willie, you read my mail, you sure enough read my mail, dude. So let's just, before we go, and we're going to enjoy the food, and we're going to enjoy the rest of the day, plus tomorrow's Labor Day, I don't know, probably everybody's off, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so with all that being said, let's, let's at least give God his, a little bit more time, okay? So, so would y'all just, uh, uh, every head bowed, every eye closed, please, let's not disrespect the presence of God, because he's in this place. And there's no possible way, y'all, I can do what I do without the Holy Ghost. No way. I couldn't do what I do without that spirit working in me. So I know that from my commitment, from me to you, I did everything that I could to yield to the Holy Spirit and yield to the word of God so that God's word could be spoken. So whatever was said, 
God wanted it said. Okay? He wanted it said. Amen? So here's some questions that I want to ask. First of all, let's deal with first things first. Okay? Please, every head bowed. And we're almost done. Just, just entertain, let's just entertain the Lord. Just a couple of more minutes and we're done. Now, first things first. Is there anybody in the house that says, Willie, I heard everything that you said, and I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not even a committed or dedicated Christian. I'm not even a Christian. I, I, I'm not anything, you know. Uh, but I tell you what, I am interested in becoming a Christian and giving my life to Jesus. If there's anybody in the house, I listen, I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I don't do that. It'll, those that know me, I don't do that kind of stuff. But at least if you would just pop your head up and put it down, at least let me see you so that I can, I can pray for you. Let's, let's not take this thing lightly. This is serious. This is serious. So is there anybody in the house? Okay, good. Second thing, Willie, I heard everything that you said, and yes, as a Christian, there are some things in my life and there are some things in my heart that I know for sure there's some dry places, there's some brittle places, there's some just things that are going on that I know does not please God, okay? And again, I ain't trying to embarrass nobody because God knows anyways, but we're just trying to flow in the spirit here, all right? So if that be you, and you just say, look, man, I just want somebody to just, just pray for me, Will. If that be you, same thing. You can pop your head up. I see you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. I see it. Thank you. Anybody else? I see it. Anybody else? Thank you. I see it. Anybody else? Just, man, Will, just pray for me, man, because, yeah, there are some things. Okay? And then here's the last thing. After I finish praying, and you're saying, you know, Will, I heard what you said, you know, and, and I'm going to repent before the Lord right now, and we're going to get this thing right, come off with a clean plate, and I just want to personally make a fresh dedication. Not that I'm not saved, not that I'm not walking it, but I just want to make a fresh dedication and a fresh commitment to God. Because, see, the thing about it is we must be dedicated people. And dedicated, dedication is not a fly-by-night thing. So if you're saying, Will, from this point on, after you, know, you pray, and I'm going to pray with you, I'm going to make a fresh dedication to the Lord. Anybody? Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes, I see. Anybody else? Fresh dedication. I see, I see, I see. Anybody else? Okay. We're almost done. You know we're going to eat. We're going to get down. But let's, let's, let's close this out. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for this word, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you love us so much that you're willing to go through the extremists of whatever it takes to make sure that we hear the truth. Some, sometimes when truth is spoken, you never know really what's really behind the person that's speaking and the things that they have been through. But Lord, thank you, Lord, that you can turn our tragedies and turn them into triumphs, Father God. You can take our wounds, Father God. You can put that water on it, Father God. Call your word. Clean up our wounds, Father God. And Lord, put us in a nice uh, fresh soil, Father God, where our fruits can begin to grow and our roots can begin to get deep, Lord, and we can get on our way to whatever purpose that you have for us, Father God. Lord, there are some folks in here, they know that there's some things that are in their heart, and Lord, we all agree as a body, we all agree, Father God, and we ask for forgiveness, Father God, Amen, church? We all are asking, Lord, that you would forgive us. Lord, that you would cleanse us of our sins, Father God. And Lord, that we would turn away from those things, Father God. Turn away from things that displease you. Turn away from things that make you upset. Turn away from things that make you cry, Lord. We never think about that. But sometimes we do things that just makes you cry. Lord, we don't, we don't want to displease you, Father God. 
So we come and we ask, Lord, that you come, that you cleanse us, that you forgive us, Father God, and put us in that fresh batch of soil, Father God. And while we're all in that soil, Father God, we are deciding right here and we are deciding right now that we are dedicating our lives to you, Father. We are making a fresh commitment. Amen, church? We are making a fresh commitment before you right now. Right now. Everybody stand up, please. Everybody stand up, please. Everybody stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Yes, Lord, we want to make a fresh commitment to you right now. And we're standing up, Father God. And our, 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 we're standing up and we're saying, Lord, we are committed Christians. It ain't just talk no more. We want to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. And whatever is messing up our transit system from our minds to our hearts, Lord, take out all the blockage. Remove all the wreckage, Father God. Remove all the debris, God, so that that word can move from our head. This word can move from our heads to our hearts, Father God. Lord, you said forgetting those things which are behind and pressing to the mark of the high call. And we're going to press to the mark of the high call in Jesus' name. And if everybody agree with me, say amen. Amen. Let's give God a round of applause. (laughs) Brother Brother Eddie, you want to say something real quick? And then while you're there, bless the food. I'm done. So we can eat. <laughs> Y'all know. I won't, I won't take it. Okay. We good? Yeah, there it is. Look at there. Had to turn it up. I'm not going to take but a second of y'all time real quick. But um, um, it, 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 was, it was almost a miracle just get all my children here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> All the kids are here. <clears throat> my, wa- my, wife was <clears throat> my wife is not here. She's working this morning. But some of y'all in here, y'all know that I've been up here a few times here in the last couple of months. And uh, talking about some, some specific things. Well, a lot of stuff has happened even since then. And uh, what I can say this is that there has been a number being done on us. Every day it gets harder. Every day it gets harder. He, he, he seems like he's taking a little bit more every day. Every day. To the point, to the point to where even I, this last couple of weeks, have just felt completely defeated. But last weekend, I went in the gym for a few minutes. Um, just to start working out, just for a few minutes. And I started working out, had my little workout shirt on, (laughs) which is right here. And I said, nobody's ever defeated me. (laughs) Never. I used to be a little skinny, little frail kid in high school no muscles, but I started working out. I, th- I, th- I started working out, and I, I, it, it, within a year, I gained almost 75 pounds. I was a lot. So a lot of stuff has been brought on my, my, my family, my kids, even, even to the point of, you know, h- health issues with one of my sons, with with the diabetes and the, and the, you know, that stuff has curved his future, taking it on a different path. Kids, I mean, everything right now is completely torn down. It's all gone. Or is it? And that's what last week was, was kind of hit me last week and said, this ain't over. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't over. I started working out a little bit. 
I was feeling good. I said, you know, this ain't over. This is just, this is just another workout. So, so I've been really, all this week, all this week, I have been getting rid of everything that was in me that I knew was wrong with me or, or was in my life that I needed, I know needed to be gone. It needed to be gone. And so I had to, st I, so all week I've been cutting things out. This got to go. This got to go, even my, even the thoughts, even even the thoughts, even the if it, if it if I thought that it was anything in there that was going to be holding me back from from receiving those blessings coming in, it's gone. I'm getting rid of it. It's all gone. So 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 this all of this stuff that is going on. I, I read a book from some years ago. It said, if the devil can't steal your joy. He can't keep your stuff. And that was from the, that was from the book of Job. And, 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 it, and it goes and went in there and said, if he can't take you completely down, like he was trying to do Job, then all the stuff he took, you got to give it back. <laughs> so so a, a lot has been taken from us these last couple of months, these last couple of years. It's been taken and taken and taken to the point to where he's just about taking everything. Everything is just about gone. But I want it back. I want it all back. And, and, and the workout that I started doing last week was just to, you know, to get my body in shape, back in shape. But it also was telling him that you didn't took all this stuff, well, get ready for a fight. Because I'm coming in there to take it back. So, 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 so he, can keep, he, can, he can keep on, but I'm getting rid of everything because I, I need God's blessings to come in there. But I was just asking, uh, uh, even, even this week, I've been reaching out to some people and, and just asking for a specific prayer. And even this week, I've already seen some daylight. <laughs> this week. And I, just, and I just had a few people out there praying. Of just a few people out there praying. So, 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 I'm, so I'm asking all of y'all in here to go ahead and join that, those, those few people, and put that together. Because if I, I've seen a little bit of daylight in just a few people that I've asked this week, then we can make a breakthrough. And I, and, and I believe that can be done. And I'm just asking everybody for that because we, we need some little bit of, we need some lifting up right about now and, and because because he's come in and tried to take it all and and I'm not backing down from that fight Amen. I'm I'm digging back in and I'm going in there and I'm if 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 the if the fight is on then be ready for it I hope he's ready for it cuz I'm coming in I'm coming in to do that so that's all I was asking I don't want to keep up any take up any more time but I I I needed to say that because uh the fight is on. Thank you. Let me bless the food. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for what you have done.